Hi, this is Lily from Arcade USA, and you're watching Retro Game Lounge. Mr. Hanky. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the craziest game show on the internet. Not game show where you win, but game show where we win. As in, we got games to show you. That's right. But ladies and gentlemen, I've got a special guest here. I have the one and only System Psycho. What's up, people? Here. For the What's first on? time on Retro Game Hall. First time in the Retro Game Hall. Thanks, man. Bro. I appreciate the invite, dude. Dude, are Thank you, you so kidding much. me, man? Look, dude, we, <laughs> our states touch. They're like kissing cousins. Yeah. And I've, ac I've actually met him before. He actually helped me get one of the sets you can see behind me. Dude did me like a freaking massive solid. Okay. And I've been after him for months That's to right. come over and be on Retro Game Hall. I'm glad I'm here, dude. Dude, I am super glad you're here because, dude, he brought some amazing pickups. Got some good shit. Yes. We have some amazing <laughs> stuff to show you. Between the two of us, this is going to be a two-parter because we have a ton of crap That's to right. get through. We've got carts. we got discs. We got Turbo Time, we got Bomberman pickups, we got Master System, we got NES, That's right. we've got just everything, dude. Everything that you could possibly need, you will find on this show. Everything. <laughs> the secret to life will be in this show. You just have to stay tuned to find out. But, right. uh, I think we've got on this fucking hype train enough. Um, right. What do you say we start off with card games? Go ahead, yeah. What do you want? You want to do first? Sure. Go ahead. What's your first What's your first pickup card? I would like to do NES if it's okay with okay. you. Okay, yeah, definitely, dude. I like NES. NES is amazing, dude. It's the that, best. That's like the bread and butter. Because you can't talk bad about Nintendo because exactly. they will send people to kill you. That's right. So just, shh. It's like talking bad about Oprah. Just don't do that. She'll send <laughs> someone to kill you. I didn't know that. It happened to my cousin. Did it really? Yes. Shit. He's dead. So, first up, this is really embarrassing because I didn't have this until now. Capcom, Disney title. That's Ship sad. And Dale Rescue Rangers. That's it's, sad. It's about time you fix that. It's and it to be honest, guys, like I'm not gonna make any excuses. This was not intentional. I seriously was looking through my game collection recently. I thought I had it. I was fucking certain that I had it. Then I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. So I'm That's like crazy. I'm like DuckTales, I'm like going through all the Disney yeah. titles. I'm like, where's Chippendale? Like I could have sworn I had this and I didn't. So I went ahead and I remedied it. Re remedy remedied it? <laughs> what did this get French all of a sudden? <laughs> remedied it. Remedied it. You did. I came up with the remedy. You found the cure. Yes. And the cure it. to my Capcom Disney deficiency is right here in this cartridge. And that game is awesome. That it is. The game is amazing. It's very fun to play with two people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like your biggest quandary is like who gets to be Chip and who gets to be Dale. But exactly. This is like this is like proof positive that when Capcom has a di Cap Cap Cap. Wow, I'm fucking up everything. Today. <laughs> Capcom has a Disney license that they just can do no wrong. Yeah. Like pretty much, you know, starting with DuckTales, that's the game we all love. It's a great, it's the easy, beatable game, but pretty much every Disney title that they put out, even um, Mickey Mouse Capade, like even that one is actually a pretty decent game. That like game it's a really simple game. Too. It's hard that as fuck, but it's a pretty decent thing. game. Yeah. Like they had a really good track record with Disney shit. It's yeah. really weird. Like they just, and you know. The, the thing about it with Capcom is like a lot of the games were really popular. So this was a really popular game. Oh yeah. And so I rented it all the time and mm -hmm. my friend owned it too. And so we would co-op this thing. And Fuck like yeah. since I was little, I, you know, I couldn't really beat games like <laughs> regular games, but this game's actually pretty simple. Yes. It's kind of short too. And you can actually pick, pick like which route you want to take because you don't have mm -hmm. to beat all the levels. No. And in the end, like, I think it was, I think it's an amazing game. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's one of the ones that people look fondly on because it was, it was a popular one. And sure. I, I believe a lot of people did play it back in the day. So it's one of the ones that you should have in your collection. Absolutely. And he fixed it. He yeah. bought it. He got it. Result. So he's good to go. Yeah. I don't have to spend any more money on this. And frankly, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say about it. That's right. Hi. All right. So um, the one NES game, um, the first one I'm going to show you is North and South. Ooh. Um, this. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I haven't really played it yet. I haven't but, played it at all. But from what it looks like, it actually looks pretty cool. It has like a, it's like top down. Has, it kind of looks Boy. like Oregon Trail, but like NES Oregon Trail, like better graphic Oregon Trail. And infinitely more racially charged. Yeah. So um, with this game, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I had so, to say it. So so um, this game is it's kind of like an uncommon NES game. I would say so. It's yeah. not like a super rare one, but yeah. this one probably goes for like. Mm, 60 bucks, yeah. 70 bucks maybe. Um, this game and the other NES game I'll show you later, um, I got it 
I bought it from one seller on Instagram. He's actually mm. local. He's yeah. in Virginia. He used to work at uh, East Starland. Mm, okay. And so I think he was just selling all of his NES games, and okay. nobody was really buying them. And he was trying to sell. I felt bad, so I was like, dude, how much for North and South? And he gave me a price, and I bought it. So good price. Yeah, I wanted to add this to the collection. I haven't bought an NES game in years, man, because the price has just gone so so high. So, but he gave me a good price, so I got it. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's no Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Oh, you know, this is this is for ballers. So you know, <laughs> that's that's fine. So flipping to the other side of the coins, if Capcom is Coke, Konami is definitely Pepsi, man. That's that's <laughs> A and B. That's like you know, that's like the the inevitable yeah. battle. Like which is better, yeah. Capcom or Konami? So definitely not Konami's finest game, Bayou Billy. Um, as we were commenting on the the box earlier, if you look at Bayou Billy's face. He kind of looks like a cross between Ernest and Crocodile Dundee, yeah, which I think is it. really an accurate description of the game itself, Yeah, because it's like a ripoff and stupid at the same time. But I think this one gets kind of an unnecessary bad rap, really? because Why is that? it's not the greatest game. I'm not going to sit here and be the freaking Bayou yeah. Billy Defender, but dude, is there any other game where you get to drive, fight, and shoot with a zapper gun? Yeah. I mean, that's, it's kind of one of a kind when you think Actually, about yeah, it like that. Right that. It's kind of unique. So it's kind of like this weird red and um, stepchild kind of thing. One thing about this game, I'll tell you right now, dude, this game is hard as it's, shit. Yes. Dude, it's yes. so hard to beat the first level. Yes. And like, th there's so many enemies that come at you. I'm like, yes. what the hell, dude? Just like, you're just like punching the guy yeah. and they just keep coming and coming yeah. and coming. Like, you have to punch them like 800 times yeah. before they fall down. So yeah. yes, it is insanely hard yep. as far as the beat em up stuff. But. Um, I basically got this in a bundle kind of lot, and this was just kind of something thrown in, but I just noticed that the quality of this box is kind of light years beyond the one that I have, yeah, and on top of that, dude, you got the manual and the freaking Nintendo poster in it yeah. for like no additional charge, and it even has the styrofoam in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, oh, but nice. it's in there, so I was like, dude, this is definitely a box upgrade. I love Konami boxes in my collection for no other reason. Yeah. They all look the same. That's what I like. They, look, they, look, they look good when you put them in, in your shelf, too. They're yeah. all like all the consistent. Contra games, yeah. the Castlevania games, like they're all silver and stuff like that. And that's actually how I organize my NES games. I organize mine by publisher. Dude, I'm the same way. Really? I'm the same, I'm the same way. Yeah. Bro, you just got so much cooler. You're the yeah. only dude I've ever met I besides do me that does that. I do that shit. I love <laughs> that. And people are just like, why don't you do it alphabetical? I'm like, because it doesn't look like it yeah, goes that that's way. The, I don't do alphabetical. That doesn't make sense. Everyone can do that. Yeah. Publisher. That's, that's the way to go. God. The way to go dude. That's right. If you don't do that, you're wrong. <laughs> so get out of here. Stop watching my show. Jesus. So um, my next NES game that I got is Akari Warriors 3, The, the Rescue. Rescue. So I haven't played this yet. I've okay. played the first two. Now, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm not a big fan of... I'm not a big fan of two. And one is like kind of hard. It's kind of iffy. Um, but... I. I I don't know, man. I, from what I hear, this is this is probably the what is this? Would you say this is the best one? As far as like the quality of the game, probably. Okay. Yes, because like the first one is kind of love hate. I actually love the first Akari Wars, even though it is a really? it is a deeply flawed game. It yeah. really is because it's it's you can get stuck and then you have to start over and all this other shit. I'm not going to defend those things. I guess for me, it's just nostalgia feels because I remember the first time I played it and I absolutely fell in love with it. Plus, mm -hmm. the Infinite Life things is kind of cool. Yeah. You know, you can just do that basically ad infinitum. But what makes this one particularly unique, if I can totally hijack your segment for a second, mm -hmm. this is the only Akari game that's beat em up because the other ones are technically a shoot em up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this one's more like you're just like punching stuff. I think you do get guns occasionally, but that's not like your primary MO. Like, you're just basically with like your fists and your knives and shit. Okay. So it's it is kind of like the odd duck, yeah, in in, in the trilogy. And, and out of this one, I think this one's the, this is probably the most uncommon one out of the three. Oh, definitely. This one took me a while to get. This one probably goes for the, around the same amount as mm -hmm. So, um, but I'm glad I got in my collection, man, because I like to complete series. Sure. Because I had the first two for the longest. I'm like, man, I just want three to finally complete mm -hmm. it, and finally I got it. So, I got that one right there. But it doesn't have Zing Zip in it. <laughs> that is the worst name for a villain I've ever heard. Zing like zip. even for an alien, that's the name of the alien boss in part Zing two. Zip. Zing Zip. It's terrible. That is the worst name it's I've ever heard. Garden. That's like what do they ask like a four year old to name it? Yeah, Zing Zip. That sounds like an alien name. <laughs> What's wrong, SNK? Like maybe it's one of those things that got lost in translation. Oh yeah, I, you're probably right. Because it's SNK is very Japanese. Yeah. I don't know, but Zing Zip is terrible. Don't play that. <laughs> Ever. My next pickup is actually a Sega Master System game. Um, this one... Okay, so this one this one is a little special, so... 
this is Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Now, you know, this is kind of like the most common... This is kind of like the, the mascot of the Sega Masters at the time. So mm -hmm. a lot of people grew up with this game. Sure. But this copy is a little special. Why? Because um, back when, I'd say like 1990, the Sega, Sega decided to kind of reprint um, their best... Their be I guess their most common best-selling game. So Alex Kidd was one of them. So the difference is, it's actually a thick font. So if you look on the side, it's thick font. It's a lot thicker, and there's okay. actually an action thing on the on the corner. Okay. Um, the original, the 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 font was a lot skinnier on the on the on the, the side as well. Okay. So I don't really collect variants, but I caught East Starlands. Um, slipping on this, so they just had it as a regular price game. Yeah. Um, and usually this game is so hard to find. on um, this variant, it, it kind of goes for like I say like a hundred bucks. Whoa. Whereas the regular game pie it goes for like thirty. So East Starling was selling for super cheap. Even though I already have it and I don't collect variants, I couldn't give I couldn't pass up on the variant just sitting there for Not that money. price. So I copped it, and it's actually in really like minty shape too. So. So you got like the variant for like the standard run-of-the-mill game price, dude. That's win-win. Yeah. So, and the thing with East Island is like they like wrap their games up, and mm -hmm. so I didn't even I didn't even unwrap it because I already have the game, so I'm just gonna keep it keep it like that. So, Why wouldn't you? I know. So cop that one. Minty fresh, bro. Minty fresh. Awesome. So I guess it's my turn now. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't have anything quite that extravagant, and to be perfectly honest, I don't even own a Sacred Master System, but. This game came in a bundle, and who am I to refuse basically free yeah. shit? Yeah. So, Sega, Double Dragon. That That's a really good game. It's <laughs> arguably, as far as console ports, like this is basically the definitive version. I think in this version. one, you can play two players. Yes. Whereas in the NES, it's only you one can't. player. That was the biggest problem. Yeah, so this, so. One, this one is definitely a lot better. It's a lot closer to the source material. Yeah. Um, as far as, like, graphically, like, the color palette and stuff like that, this is definitely a lot closer to the original arcade game, which is still one of my favorite arcade games ever. Um, I need to get a Sega Master System at some point, then. Because, like, I actually remember playing this when I was a kid, and, like, I have a game that I can't even play. Yeah. That's terrible. So if you were to get a Sega Masters, would you start collecting more Sega Master games? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Like, there's there's a lot of great games on that system. Yeah. You know, I wish I got into it, like, five years ago before everyone and their fucking mom started yeah. doing it, but... There's, um... <sighs> um and there wasn't that really many games made for it, so I think there's only, mm -hmm. like, 116. Yeah, it's very completable. Yeah. So I, I'm actually kind of close to completing it. I only need, like, 15 more. Do it. Um, but... Talking off of that. Why uh, wouldn't you? My next pickup is another Sega Master game, and this is um, Ghouls and Ghosts. Good game. So this is one of the more, I guess, uncommon, rare games for the Sega Masters. This one kind of commands like a, a complete, probably like 100, 120 bucks. Ooh. Um, they do have this for what is it, for the Sega Genesis, I believe. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing is, I'll be honest with you, man. I, I really, I didn't really grow up with this series. I have it for Super NES, NES, and I have the one for Genesis, and I got this one. I just needed to knock out the rare ones out the way, man, because I'm trying to go for a full set. So sure. I just want to get this one out, and it was in good condition. So. How does how's the the play on the actual system? Like how how's the fidelity as far as the arcade game went on its console? Like is it a, a decent port in your opinion? I think it is. Yeah. Okay. I, the thing with Sega Master, it, like you know, with NES, the colors are like not as the colors are a little. Oh, great. they're way better. Whereas the Sega Masters, it's like yeah. it's like way better colors. And oh, absolutely. It feels like more of an arcade board on the Sega Masters. Than, okay. Than, than, yeah. So, yeah. Good Cut pickup, that. dude. Good stuff. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. So uh, my last Sega Masters pickups is Golden Axe Warrior. Now this is one of the more sought after games for the Sega Masters. Mm -hmm. um, so background with this game, there there's four games for the Sega Masters um, that have what they would say, a UPC sticker on the back. I you can see that. Really? Yeah, so the way, <laughs> the reason why they have these is basically, so Golden Axe Warrior, Sonic the Hedgehog, Strider, and Spider-Man, they all have um, UPC stickers. This indicates that this is the US version. So basically what it was is these games were actually PAL games, like okay. sold in Europe. Okay. So what Sega did is instead of just making a, a US version, all they did was just get European versions, yep. slap a sticker on it, and ship it out to the US. Wow. And so this is this is how you know through the sticker is that it's a US copy. So with, with Sonic, for instance, that game was like 
a U.S. copy is like astronomical. Price. Oh, I'm sure. But yeah, this is the U.S. And on top of that, this is this is actually a unique game because it, it plays like Zelda, and it's oh my it's god, it's exactly like Zelda, dude. And it, it's <laughs> a it's a really good game. Like wow. So this is like Sega Master version of I guess you could say Zelda. The Legend of Zelda. Zelda. Legend of Zelda, man. So and this game probably goes for like. 200 bucks maybe wow dude yeah it's a 200 dollars game dude. so it's, it's one of the one of the more more expensive sega master system games so i had to just get it out the way for the collection we got a freaking baller over here yeah, man so i mean this is i bought this months ago so <laughs> this is like my summer pickups so I, I didn't just buy this like all together and then like <laughs> one whole swoop i just like just like I fucking the hope not. Damn, son. <laughs> so yeah that was it cool i picked up two uh snes games um, I don't usually pick up Super NES games because they're, dude, I feel like every collector is trying to go for a Super NES. Of course. The prices are just... It's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand, especially yeah. for box games. But, mm. um, pretty much, I usually just buy one NES game a year, but Damn. Yeah, I bought two this time. But the reason why I bought two is because one of them is a reproduction. But I got um, Secret of Mana. Good game. And I got Undercover Cops. I've heard about that one. So, Undercover Cops was only a Super Famicom game. Mm -hmm. So, this is a reproduction, and I bought I bought the box um, that made it look like you know a, a U.S. version. And it's a really sweet beat 'em up because you can there's this you can pick up like pillars and like just whack people with it. And, and my, my favorite genre is beat 'em up. So, oh, the, you know, one of my favorites too. Yeah, so I had to get this, and it was super cheap. And I really like the cover. I really like the art. It, it's like super cool. That and then Secret of Mana is, you know, everybody knows this man. This yes. is um, an action RPG. Mm -hmm. So from Square. Yeah, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think this is is, is this co-op or is that Secret of Evermore? I could be wrong, but it's co-op. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it's not. Yeah, the multi-tap. Yeah, you right. know why? It's three players, but you have to unlock the third player. So a lot of the funny. I'm gonna totally hijack your segment here, but yeah, funny story. Okay. So this is included on the Super NES Mini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people are wondering, like, wait a minute, there's only two controller ports. Like, how do you play three players? Yeah. Because if you unlock the third character, you can play as, as three players simultaneously. Okay. So someone actually thought of that, and they invented this uh, little uh, Wii adapter that turns a Super NES controller into a Wii controller. Okay. So you buy that, and you can just use the regular old school Super NES multi-tap and okay. Super NES controllers on your SNES Mini. Really? Yeah. So like this little like eight dollar part, bones all. Then all you need is Super Nintendo controllers and you're good. That's tight, dude. Yeah, I actually featured that on a previous episode of Retro Game Wall where I had the little thing. It's this little little adapter about yay big. Okay. That's like Super NES on one side and Wii on the other side. Wii slash Wii U. Dope. And that's literally all you need. That you know then if you have a you know the Bomberman adapter or any Super NES adapter, you're good. I didn't know that. I thought it was just co-op. I didn't know you could play three players. Mm -hmm. That's actually. Pretty cool, dude. That's that's a pretty sweet game. And you know, I mean, the reason why this game came up to memory for me to buy is because the new one for PS4 came out, mm -hmm. which I never got because I heard it wasn't all that great. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know what? I want the Super NES version. Yeah, let me just go buy that. Now you do. So I bought it, and it's not super super priced, like high priced. No, so, it's not. It's not so really that rare. They sold plenty yeah, of copies yeah. of this. So I, I just wanted to get that out the way. So oh, you got it out the way, bro. You got it. So who about the way, bitch? <laughs> So, I don't know about you, dude, but I like Sega Saturn games. Dude, I love Sega Saturn. I think that's a very underrated console. It, I think it is. Everybody knows it's underrated. I mean, everybody's, like, trying to get it now. Yeah, because, like, yeah. the Genesis and the Dreamcast get all the love, and I think everyone kind of forgets about the humble Saturn. Mm -hmm. And there's actually some pretty decent games on there, um, yeah. some of which were previously on the Sega CD that never really lived up to their full potential. I wish they would have ported Night Trap over to Saturn. That, oh. that was the one where they didn't, where I was like, why didn't you do that? Yeah. Because you, you could have put out the definitive version of the game. Probably from all that backlash, you know what I mean? They probably wanted to risk their hands off of that game. Like, probably, yeah. yes. But I mean, we did get ports of things like Corpse Killer, for example, like the far better versions on the Saturn, as opposed to the Sega CD, or even the CD32X, the Saturn version still has cleaner video. Yeah. And following on that same coattail, we've got Double Switch, <laughs> featuring Mr. Corey Haim, because I love me some Corys. <laughs> And this is definitely the better version of the game. Like the, if you look on the back here, you've got much cleaner video, man. You've got kind of a full screen display. You've got much higher fidelity, mainly because you're not limited by the Sega Genesis's color palette, which was the one drawback. Even if you had the 32X, you're still running on the Genesis color palette. Okay. So that's why the video just looked 
like you just look at it, you're just like, that's not that many colors. And you look at it on the Saturn, which it has like a lot eight hundred more colors. Yeah, you know, it just looks a lot better. So like, yeah, I, I have the Sega CD version. I bought it. I bought it at Toys R Us when they were getting rid of all their Sega CD stuff, and yeah. I play it, and it just. Yeah. It just doesn't look as good. It looks like mud. It's it just, it just doesn't look as good. Everything's brown and peach. And, yeah, it's just, it's yeah. not as clean. Like, there's comparison videos actually here on YouTube where you can look at, like, the, the CD version of Double Switch versus the Saturn. It's no contest. Mm. Like, you just look at the clarity of the video. It's like, the size of the video, the color palette, everything like that. It's just infinitely better. <clears throat> so, I don't have this game for my collection. Uh, how much does it usually run for? This is usually, on a bad day, you're looking at the $40 to $50 Are price Are you point. serious? Yes. That game double switch cost that much? Yes, because they didn't put out that many copies. I was oh, lucky and I got really? it for 20 bucks. So, really? right place, right time. I've just been hunting for it for long enough and now I have it. Because wow. I love to do some of my video collection. I love Corey's. Yeah. I, it's kind of a thing for me. That's what's up. That's, oh. <laughs> he knows what's up. <laughs> I got some Sega Saturn stuff as well. What do you got, bro? Um, I'm going <clears throat> to show you two games together because... They're both RPGs. I got Albert Odyssey and <clears throat> Shining Force 3. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I haven't played these yet. Um, I'm still, I still need to get like a memory card for like my Sega Saturn. I have one, but it doesn't work, so I don't even bother playing these. You know, it's, it, these are big games. Um, but I wanted to get them out the way because, um, you know, Saturn has some really good uh, RPGs, mm. and they're going up in price. So I figured I'd buy them now, snatch them up. So. Um, yeah, I got those two, and now I think I just need one more RPG from the Saturn. That is Magic Knight Ray Earth, which is like I don't know, man, 500 bucks or something. It's like there is one thing I noticed about one of those. Can I borrow Albert Odyssey for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Something I noticed on the back. Okay, so you've got two really good things going for you on this. One is working designs, yeah, which are awesome. I know that from collecting Triple Graphics. Anything with their label on it. Rockstar shit. Yeah, they have a lot of good PS1 games. They have working yeah. designs was yeah very flying under the radar. Like you know Capcom, Konami, like those guys were getting all the freaking kudos. These guys put out a lot of really quality shit. Yeah. And then on the same token, developed by Sunsoft. I actually you know what? I didn't, I didn't even notice that. Did you just see that? Yes. I didn't even see that. Developed. So you've got Sunsoft <laughs> and working designs. You got a good a good eye on that. That's. That's some good shit. Like, even if I didn't know anything about the game, I'd be like, dude, I would buy it just based on that. Yeah. And so you got two quality companies working. What's on cool it. about uh, Working Designs is all their games, their covers are all shiny. Oh, hell yeah, they are. Yeah. I don't know. Cameron does it. Everything's got bling. Yeah, it's so. got bling. <laughs> so, that's pretty cool. That I is like that. very cool. That's really cool. Good score. Yours was way nice. I just have a quarry game. What do I know? <laughs> it's so good, though. So it, yeah. it's, Sorry. it's awesomely bad. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Enemy Zero Ooh. and Golden Axe the Duel. You're on a Golden Axe roll this month, dude. dude. Golden Axe is the shit. So, um, you think this is actually a fighting game, and it's like a really cool 2D sprite animated fighting game. This this game is amazing. I actually got this game for free through my eBay bucks. Uh, I've been wanting it for a while. I I was looking at it when it was around the thirty-five dollar range, but it went up significantly. So I, was like, mm. I got to get it now. So I got it, got that one, and then Enemy Zero. I wanted. I've never heard of this. So basically, I think this. Is, I think this is like related to D. You know D, right? Vampire Hunter D. No, not <laughs> not Vampire Hunter D. Just D. No, I'm, what's D? For PS One, PC. Oh wow. Okay. My other um, loop. And then yeah, and then um, Dreamcast had D two. You never seen. Oh, I never heard of this. You never heard of D? No. It's just it's just the letter D, and it's in, it's in blood. Okay, right, you gotta look it up. So <laughs> like the vitamin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, so I think this is related to it because the gameplay is is this probably I don't know if it's a spiritual successor or if it is a sequel. Okay. But um, yeah, it comes with, dude. It has like four discs. Shit. And it's a big game, dude. And I played a little bit of it, but to be honest with you, man, going back and playing these old like really weird like 3D games is. It's it's hard to navigate it, man. You know, it's just kind of boring to be honest with you. Is but, it like point and click kind of stuff? Nah, so, so you, you're it's like first person view. You play as this this lady, and it's first person view, but you can like move where you want to go. But it's like cinematic, so it's like very slow to move, and you got you can like open up drawers and oh, it's it's weird, man. So, Whoa. yeah, it's a random game, but I'm glad I got it out the way. I really wanted to play it, and I played it, and honestly, it wasn't all that great. I thought it was gonna be a little better, to tell you the truth, but. <laughs> Whatever. So you're basically saying like I'm yeah. incredibly disappointed yeah. by that. And Enemy Zero only came out for the Saturn. I don't think it came out for anything else. So I, dude, I've never heard of it. Yeah. That's wow. Your shit is way more obscure than mine. Yeah. And then I got one last Sega Saturn game, and that is Super Puzzle Fighter 2. 
Uh, this one, this one is more rare than the PS version. I actually got this from East Starland. I traded in a whole bunch of like garbage games and doubles that I found, and they had this for a really good price. So I essentially got it for free because all the other doubles I got for free. So, okay. um, and I love this game, dude. Um, yeah, you're like diehard Street Fighter. I, guy. I love Street Fighter and I love so. Capcom. And then when I got my PS One, um, this game was actually one of the first games I bought. And I didn't even know they had it for Saturn. I didn't have a Saturn until like a little later, but um, I wanted to get out this way because I think I have all the Capcom games for the Sega Saturn now. Wow. So I think this was the last one to get. So damn, bro. I got that out the way, man. Absolution. I love that game. Awesome. Completed Good score, it. dude. Series, so. Damn. That's right. You have like the way cooler games. Like it's, I, I just have like run of the mill stuff. And you're like, yo, I get this like ultra obscure game. Oh no, well don't get me wrong. I did buy a whole bunch of like. I'm just showing just the good stuff I got through, throughout the summer. I didn't bring any of oh. stuff. So. Well, don't worry. I got plenty of crap covered. <laughs> no. Nah, man. This is a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. Good stuff in all these games. So, that about wraps up part one. A very special thanks to my man, System Psycho, for no stopping by no and problem. being part of Retro Game Dude, Thank this you. was awesome. Your pickups appreciate were it. incredible. I know. And mean. were <laughs> way more than mine. Like, you definitely baller status. Pretty, pretty sad, but yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> yours, yeah, I had all this, and like, no, his, his pickups are cooler than mine. I, I just picked which ones to show, so don't yeah, worry. I, I, did, I did pick up some, some fillers there, but yeah. See, I... You're getting all my crap. I'm, I'm not. There's no censorship. Here. It's like completely <laughs> it's unfiltered. Everything. It's everything. All right. That that bundle though. That bundle though was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was pretty. I'm cool. just gotta say. Stuff. So, tune in for part two. That will be in the link below as soon as the uh, video is live. When ever the hell I feel like putting it up, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But we've got a bunch more coming. We got Bomberman pickups. We got Turbo pickups. We got accessories. We got all kinds of cool stuff. But you won't. No, until you tune in. You have to tune in to watch it. We're not going to tell you about the rest of it because that would be totally counterproductive and we wouldn't get a click out of you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want, is you to watch it. That's right. I need my two cents from YouTube. Watch okay? it. Yes, watch it. Now. Stay tuned. Click it. We will see you next time. Bye. Peace.